Okay, so here's a circuit with a resistor, a capacitor, and an inductor supplied by a sinusoidal source, 20 cosine 40 minus 15 degrees, so that's volts. Uh, and we're asked to figure out what the voltage across the inductor is. Uh, in fact, we're asked to show that the voltage across the inductor is given as 17.15 cosine 40 plus 15.9 C degrees. So that's what we're asked to do. So this is another uh, sinusoidal analysis problem. Uh, this problem can be done multiple ways. Uh, we can use nodal analysis. In this, today we'll try to do this using the concept of voltage dividers. But before we do that, uh, let's convert the cosine terms into their phasor uh, uh, domain so that our uh, algebra is a lot more simplified. So instead of doing trig identities, we'll be working with complex numbers in that case. So 20 cosine 40 minus 15 degrees in phasor domain can be written as uh, basically 20 angle minus 15 degrees uh, volts for omega equals 4 radians per second. So 4 radians per second, that's omega right here, that's the angular frequency. And if and since that's the only source here, that's the only source of frequency here, so we can write the phasor representation of this with its amplitude 20 and its phase angle minus 15. Next, we'll look at the impedance. So here's an impedance of a resistor 60 ohms. For a 10 millifarad capacitor, the impedance is given by 1 over j omega c which can also be written as 1 over j, it can also be written as minus j, so the impedance of the capacitor can be written as minus j divided by omega c. We know omega is 4, we know the capacitor is 10 millifarads, so 10 times 10 to the power minus 3 farads. So if we substitute all of that, we basically get 40 times 10 to the power minus 3 in the denominator, which leads us to j20 minus j25 ohms for the impedance uh, due to the capacitor. Similarly, the impedance uh, because of the inductor is given as J omega L, right? So J omega L, that's the impedance of the inductor. L is given as uh, L is given as 5 Henry. Uh, omega is 4 radians per second, so 4 times 5 is 20. So we eventually end up with J 20 ohms. So now we've converted every single component there into their phasor representation and their impedances. So let's redraw that circuit real quick and so as thus. So now when we look at the circuit, a few things are uh, abundantly clear. Uh, the capacitor, the impedance because of the capacitor is in parallel with the impedance because of the inductor. So those two guys are in parallel and parallel impedances work just like parallel resistors. The reciprocal sum of the impedances add together to give you the reciprocal equivalent. If there are only two impedances, you can just uh, calculate the total uh, equivalent impedance for parallel by basically multiplying the two impedances and then adding them up uh, in the denominator. So in other words, uh, let me call that impedance LC. Impedance LC, because of uh, imp inductor and the capacitor, is given as minus J25, so this impedance times J20, that impedance, this times that divided by this plus that. So in other words, JLC is given as sus. Now if I simplify this using my calculator, I get the total parallel impedance there between those two elements, GLC, I get uh, J100 ohms. Okay, that's what I get for the total impedance. So I've solved that. So now basically this circuit, let's redraw that to simplify this. So we have a 20 angle minus 15 de degree volt uh, source supplying current to a 60 ohm impedance that is in series with a J100 ohm impedance. So this kind of looks like two impedances are in series and the voltages are gonna divide. So the total 20 minus 15 degrees volt is going to divide between these two impedances. So the voltage across the J100 ohm impedance that we just calculated in our last uh, step is given by a voltage divider. So the, vo the impedance at this node, uh, so this impedance divided by the total series impedance between these two guys times that voltage gives us the voltage divided across this uh, new uh, impedance right here. So we can write that as J100 divided by 60 plus J100 times the 20 angle minus 50, right? All right, so the 
so here we have two different representation of complex number here we have Cartesian coordinates here we have uh, polar coordinates uh, in the polar domain for those complex numbers uh, life gets a lot more easier if you go with one or the other in my case I'm since there is a multiplication and division and we know that in case of a complex number multiplication and division is a lot easier in the polar domain so I'm going to try and convert everything into polar domain so the top part J100 is going to convert to 100 angle 90 degrees 100 angle 90 degrees the bottom part 60 plus J100 if I take the square root of 60 square plus 100 square it gives me a total magnitude of 116.62 and if I take the arc tangent of 100 divided by 60 I get 59.04 degrees so I'm keeping it to two decimal places because the original problem asked us to find the voltage uh, and it said so that V0 was equal to 17.15 cosine 40 plus 15.96 so it, it, it had two decimal places so I'm going to keep the two decimal places here. So that's what I get. Now I have complex number and polar domain throughout. So this complex number is divided by another complex number and multiplied by another complex number. So in this case, well, the magnitudes act up just like this. So 100 divided by 116.62 times 20 is the overall magnitude. And the angle is basically when complex numbers divide each other, I get 90 minus 59.04. And that is multiplied with uh, this complex number. So this resulting angle gets added to whatever angle this is because we are multiplying it. So overall, I get 100 times 20 divided by 116.62. I must have I dropped the 2 right there. Uh, 90 degrees minus 90 degrees minus 59.04 because it's being divided two complex numbers are dividing each other and to that we add negative 15 degrees so overall what I get is V0 is 17.15 angle 15.96 degrees volts so this is the phasor representation of that voltage V0 now if you want to convert that to the time domain our omega was 4 so we can write this as 17.15 cosine 40 plus 15.96 degrees volts right so that's the voltage across that capacitor right there that's what sorry the voltage across the capacitor or the voltage across the inductor v0 they're uh, they're both in parallel so that's what we were asked to find or prove 